in this module and in the next module we will see that we have the genetic principles the what we have been talking about how one generation transmits its genetic information to next can be useful for humans because human beings also transmit genetic information from one generation to the next so first of all there i would like to tell you that we cannot in order to determine genotype of a person we cannot do test cross that will be highly unethical and illegal so the way we get information is we build the pedigree we start from the patient or the person we want to investigate we investigate the relatives of that relevant relatives of that particular person and then we build the family tree or the pedigree there are specific symbols we use in for making a pedigree they are displayed on the screen i'll point out some special ones male is a square female is a circle undesignated sex is a diamond shape more importantly this is how you write siblings and consanguineous marriage which is marriage between two related individuals is with the two bars and marriage between unrelated uh, not closely related individuals is with a single bar these are the more important ones there are of course other displays too also uh, i would like to point out affected with the trait is a solid solidly completely filled square or circle carrier of the trait which will be heterozygous condition is half full circle or half full uh, half colored box carrier for x link trait is a circle with the with a dot in it we cannot have carriers with boxes because x link traits are only females can be carriers of x link traits so let's look at this information now here's an example of a pedigree so we started for example this person came in and he wanted to know he had or this person had a disease particular disease and you wanted to investigate this what is the mode of inheritance of this particular disease say if for example if this person wants to have marriage wants to marry someone he wants to know what is the probability he will have affected children so you don't know whether the disease he's carrying is recessive or dominant so you will start out by making his pedigree or his family tree here's an example we have already talked about these symbols in our previous slide so you make this pedigree now when you look at this you can immediately tell it is an autosomal dominant condition okay how can we do that we need to understand features of autosomal dominant disorders we will go to that next here also please note when you are making a pedigree the oldest person oldest offspring comes first then the second oldest third oldest and the youngest is in the last so this is how you make a pedigree now let's look at first the features of autosomal dominant disorders then we look at the autosomal recessive disorders and then x linked disorders so when we make a pedigree the whole purpose of this exercise is so when we make a pedigree if we want to investigate a disease whether it is dominant or recessive a human disease we should be able to do that so here are the features of autosomal dominant disorders major features this kind of disease autosomal dominant disease can also be manifested or it can appear in heterozygous state at least one parent of an index case is affected i will show you the previous slide here is our previous slide at least you can see one parent is affected and both males and females can transmit the condition i showed you that uh, in the previous slide uh, you can look at it there at your leisure when infected person marries an unaffected child the probability of having child carrying having that disease is at the minimum 1 in 2 50% chance one chance in 2 reduced penetrance some autosomal disorders people have the disease gene which is causing disease but gene does not manifest its condition it's a rare phenomena not very clearly understood but one of the examples is braca it is type of uh, uh, breast cancer variable expressivity i'll show you a photograph graphic example of this too in in autosomal dominant disorders certain diseases although an individual has a gene for that particular disease however the symptoms could be very mild other person who has the same gene for same mutation in another case talking about two people 
they have the same genotype they have same type of genes one is showing mild symptoms other is showing very drastic symptoms for example here is a photograph of two people suffering from same disorder it's an autosomal dominant disorder called neurofibromatosis so here you can see one patient has these large nodules on his skin the other patient just has caffeolase or these dark pigment spots uh, caffeolase french for coffee with chocolate so there's a big difference between the phenotype of these two individuals although they may have the same mutation or same gene let's look at the features of autosomal recessive and extinct disorders in our next module